Hello everyone, sorry for the delay that we had in the beginning of the show, about 37-40 minutes right there. Uh, I am Jason Kaplan, and joining me today, instead of Pansy, we have someone even more awesome and even more beautiful, is the man Dogwit from Dinitas. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jason. I am very beautiful, thank you. <laughs> I saw your Skype picture, so I can, I, can, I can attest to that one. But we'll be doing the brackets and all that in just a little bit, because we're already underway into the game. Uh, we had to actually change to a completely different server here to actually get this one going, because we're having some problems with ours. So we didn't get to tell them whether it was going to be live or not just yet. But we're going to be starting here, and we're going to have ESC over on the US side, and I believe that is this button. Yes, I win. I hit the right button. Okay. Uh, we have ESC over on the blue side. For the team, we have Lagzer, Explo, Jansen, Kazam, Doobie. And over on uh, name side, which obviously not going to be tagged up here, is Meridian, Pavic, Supermesh, Terror, and Jezus. I'm going to call up for this one. So we're already underway here. We're already seeing a big lead already developing for ESC. And can you just quickly walk us through how this map is played and what we should be seeing here from both teams? Yeah, generally, uh, if you look at where Jay uh, Jansen is right now and Kazam, that's the, the walkway that overlooks B, and that is a critical location on this flag. And you can see that the ESC guys have already gone and grabbed it. Um, this gives them a bit of a, a control over the B. Now, the two holds that they really want in this will be the B and A hold. Uh, B flag is the most critical one, and that's where you're going to see a lot of the fighting for. Uh, C and A have very randomized spawns that come in behind them, and that's where they're very difficult to hold quite regularly. But the B and A is generally the one teams like to go for, and especially with the upper balcony where Jansen is. Uh, if you get that, you can hold the A and B quite successfully. Yeah, we see a lot of teams actually uh, use that kind of positioning to their advantage to kind of pick up a lot of kills. I'm trying to think of the team in particular off the top of my head and how well they used it. I, I think it might have been Dinitas, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in one of the matches they put on this one. But we are seeing A and B already switching over for both teams here. Uh, you see, getting a nice little bit of an advantage with their ticket lead going into this first half here. Uh, unfortunately, I can't even show you the rules right now since they started with uh, or started so quickly and weren't even into the game just yet. But we do have C capped over for ESC. B is actually under the way or underway of uh, being capped from them, as well as uh, Meridian. I'm actually here to stop this in terms of uh, name here, but he's looking for the kill. Looks like he will be able to pick up one here. It looks like they will be able to start capping this back over for themselves. He's actually going to turn around and get a nice kill on Alaxer as well. It's a nice little bit of a two piece coming in there for him. And that does lock them down this B uh, flag as well. At the same time, they're going for C. They're going for a tri cap. And as you're saying before, a lot of back spawns. That's kind of risky to do yeah the esc guys have kind of been caught out a bit that they're, they're very much stuck up on that balcony which is a critical location on the map but at the same time if teams use the back road they can just pretty much go to c and a without any um any real trouble from the esc guys up on that balcony um right now every push that comes off of that balcony onto the a flag has been shut down and uh, this is a, it's really good for name guys, but at the same time, with that upper balcony, they can drop off to C, B, and A pretty much whenever they feel like it, and that's what's happened over at C right now. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a nice position where you can go to any of the flags relatively quickly. They're all relatively the same distance away from you besides B. Uh, I guess A's a little bit closer than C is, but they finally have got a 2k back for themselves here, but we're seeing name with the respawn sending three up towards that top side, and like you are saying before, if they can take down lags with, and actually get the control for themselves, maybe they'll get a little bit more control over the game and get the ticket lead back in their own favor. Yeah, you're going to see, oh, that's a big kill, actually. Uh, lags are, and Expo goes down, and this is going to give the upper balcony over to name, and this is uh, definitely what they need right now. Uh, they're going to get a hold of B. This is forcing the ESE guys to come forward now. This is also meaning that uh, for name, this is quite an opportunity to get the frags, but ESE have pushed in through the house. They've lost control of the outside of B, but with the control of the houses, this means that they pretty much have a field of view onto that B flag, and there you see they've cleared up B, and they're moving on A right now. Uh, full top Domination cap could be on the cards here. Oh, well, yeah, we're actually seeing A being uh, kept at the exact same time by Kazam over on the uh, backside. We see respawns coming in, and with that take that name got on that balcony with uh, Jezus, they actually kind of lost position around the entire map. We're seeing Meridian actually go for a B cap here, and it looks like he might be able to hold on to this one. He's going to take down uh, Jansen, I believe that was right there, and actually going to spot two more off for ESC. He's going to be able to hold on to this for a little bit longer. Does get the cap, so they do stop the potential tri cap from coming in, but he does fall very shortly right after that from a grenade. and. We actually chose this game uh, as the first game they to really show you guys for a couple of reasons. Uh, name, they're kind of an unheard of team, but they've done a lot of great things. You know, for instance, they beat Eyeballers back in cut number two. They lost to, uh, unfortunately for them, Epsilon a little bit later on. But you were saying, uh, saying to me over this past weekend in the Go for Battlefield 4 uh, series, they actually almost beat Fnatic. Yeah, they had a really good game with Fnatic. Um, unfortunately, they did get a crash uh, during the game, but they did bring them down to quite a. Uh 
a, a decent, uh, a respectable loss. I think that's the best way to put it. And against a team like Fnatic, having a respectable loss is, uh, it means something in my opinion, especially with a team like Fnatic. But um, the ESC guys are one of these teams that have kind of always been on the cusp of doing great things. And talking of great things, they pretty much just wiped everyone at B and they've got a clear road open to A now as well. It's just the balcony that they have no control over. Yeah, and I mean, they don't really seem to care too much right now. I mean, there's a couple of people actually trying to get a couple of kills here or there um, when they do spot them out, but they don't care. They have control of B. They're going to be taking control, I believe, of A in just a second, and they still will have that two cap advantage. But Nameless, they finally do have a group spawn coming in from the C side here, and they're looking to take B back. It is finally being kept over them in the hands of Pavic here. But ESC, how are they going to respond to this? And currently, they're just waiting for those responses to come in. And even uh, Marian is actually coming to the side over towards A, but he does get taken down by XPLO, and that will stop that push from coming in. Yeah, this is a really back and forth game here. Um, a lot closer than maybe I was expecting. ESC guys have had a lot of top profile matches, but Neymar really rising to the challenge here. I mean, there's only about what, 30 tickets in this at the moment. And uh, with the control of the upper balcony, Neymar can really, really make a, an impact here. ESC guys obviously um, doing quite a good job between C and A. They can't really challenge B until they clear out that upper balcony. And it's just so far away. So they're just using the other side of the road where they, they don't have any trouble with crossfire and they're just um they're going for the ticket bleed with only uh 150 tickets per map uh, per round sorry it, it's best to just play safe at this point and you don't really need to do anything crazy but then again yes they go for <laughs> yeah. full domination cap yeah and then together i mean they went for a tri cap and it's working out for them very well and you know we've seen a lot of teams play on a lot of different maps over this past couple of weeks with cut number one and cut number two and a lot of teams surprisingly to me you know for instance like fanatic all the top teams they don't care necessarily about just capping two and hold on to that. They want to get as many tickets as they possibly can coming into that second half if they feel uh, confident for it. But in the meantime, Name going to be capping A back as ESC is going to be capping C over for themselves. So we're going to have a little bit of a switcheroo coming in. But Jez is still maintaining control of that balcony like you were mentioning before. And Pavic, he's going for a slight push onto the C side. If he can pick up a kill or two, he actually might open it up. But he does get a headshot out there. I believe that was on the laser or Lagzer. But he does get taken down from the side, so he won't be able to get this cap over just yet. No, uh, Terra there also uh, was nearby finishing off that little capture. But uh, at the same time, with uh, from ESC's point of view, with B and A, they've got what they wanted. What they really need now is control of the upper balcony and that road. If they can secure that, they'll pretty much win this round. But at the same time, they know they're not going to get that balcony, so they're trying to play a very safe game of flags here. They, 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 they know if they can't get rid of that guy up in balcony, B is always up for grabs. So they're trying to just make sure that they've always got the bleed, and if B goes down, they'll go for C as hard as they can. Yeah, very good point. And we actually see uh, they make a little bit of a move outside of balcony. We see Jesus finally go down. There's actually no man over on that balcony side as uh, Marion is actually the only man here to cap over towards B. So they will get a two cap back for themselves as he gets a nice shot right there. But still, the damage is done. I mean, they're down 50 tickets, almost 60 at this point. Yeah, this is what's forcing Name off that balcony. And now you see the ESC has took it. And this is where it's going to get really bad for Name. If they can't make sure that they keep control of B, they're going to lose B and A. And with B and A and that upper balcony, you've got this straight line down from Doobie all the way down to, well, was Expo before he got his head blown off. And <laughs> it, it's, it's a very difficult line to break. And Kazam is going to go ahead and take its Pavic. They do actually trade kills here. And I want to put out guns a little bit later when we get to the half because you mentioned something to me a little bit earlier. And Lauren and I, or Pans and I, have been noticing over the past couple of weeks that guns are finally being changed. We're not seeing Ace 23s picked up out of every single person on every team. And we're seeing a lot of scars actually come in. As we see, uh, Jansen actually go for a nice holder there. Does take down Jesus, but that's just it. And that will be A going back over to Name here. XPLO, he's in the vicinity. He could potentially stop this. And that would give him a huge advantage coming to the second half because they're up so many tickets right now. Oh, wow, he gets a nice little kick, uh, kill right there on XPLO. Still trying to control A just a little bit here. C and A currently in favor of Nameless, or Nameless, Name, sorry. But you see, we'll be able to get A back over for themselves here. And Name just trying to go for something they possibly can right now because they're down 82 to 9 in tickets. Um, they're getting taken on left to right in terms of kills that you can see on this, the scoreboards. Right now on ESC, everyone playing pretty similar in terms of kills and deaths. And over for Name's side, we have Terra really stepping up for his team, 12 and 8. Uh, we have Marion, he's 11 and 16. I mean, he has a lot of kills, but he's been going around the map trying to pick them up uh, here or there. And that will be ESC going into the second half with an 82 ticket lead right now. And it looks like actually Dogbert DC'd on the call. So we're going to have to actually uh, wait for him to come back in just a little bit. But... As I was saying before, a lot of people picking up the scar right now. We actually, I'm trying to think of the team we saw use it mostly, and I, I can't think of the team off the top of my head, unfortunately, but 
It gives you that nice ability to uh, fire from long range. I think Unfix was using it quite a bit in cut number two we saw last week uh, from Fnatic, or Unfix, sorry. And uh, if you have the right attachment onto it, the muzzle break and the angle grip, those first two shots will be dead on. And you can do a lot of damage. You pick up quite a few kills like that. And right now the stand-up man for name is Terror, but only 12 at 8. He has 4,000 score, doubling pretty much the second closest person to him. But it just wasn't enough. ESC was able to just control them for uh, the majority of the game. We're going to come back to me real quick, see if I can get Daubert back on the call and see if uh, he's done being DC'd or not. I believe he's still having problems with internet connection, so hopefully we'll be able to come in just a little bit later. Okay, so apparently ESC might actually change the servers after this first map, because I believe we're playing on a Polish server here, so let's go ahead and take you uh, back in the game here uh, momentarily. As it loads in, eventually... It'll be there. But thank you guys for joining us. I really appreciate it. Make sure you check out, uh, well, obviously our social media over at Battlefield ESL on Twitter and Facebook. You can get all the updates on when we will be doing these cups and or, uh, and when we will be doing a, a lot of other different things. We are going to have the side switch up here. We're going to have name over on the U.S. side, ESC over on the Chinese side. And ESC, I mean, we talked about name a little bit, you know, here or there, but ESC, like uh, Dogbert was saying, they've always been on the cusp of really breaking into the scene. You know, they beat Pyrogen uh, in cut number two, lost to them in cut number one, lost to Beecher Makers in cut number two, but currently they're only sitting, well, not only, but they're sitting at 13th place in the overall rankings, um, which we'll show you after this first map does get done since we got thrown into it right away. But here we're going to see how both teams are really going to break this one down. We're seeing names set four people up towards this B site. They want to be able to control this. And one man, Jensen, back to make sure to control over to A. We're seeing, actually, uh, ESC set a couple... Sorry, names over on... Wow. Okay, apparently yeah, the score is wrong on that one. No, oh, that's right. Sorry about that. So we have uh, ESC actually sending one man over towards the backside. Looking for something right there. Next PLO. He's actually going to spot that man from name moving over there, I believe. But instead, he actually just walks around the corner. Going to be moving up towards this top side. Try to give them that vision over towards this B site. Right now, he's kind of playing a little bit of an Murray, and he's actually going straight to the back. He's, he's trying to be that annoying role that we saw Epsilon use so well um, in the hands. Uh, I can't remember his name. I think it was Jera, if I'm not mistaken. But no, sorry, it's Horik. He was being so annoying and just kind of rotating, constantly applying pressure into these back positions and forcing Stone, the other team, to really be there to kind of stop it. And he's doing the same thing right now with him, XPLO, as well as Kazam, who's going to be coming in from the back side. Looks onto him. But the thing is, he's drawing two people away, which allows the rest of name to go for a cap onto B. And EC is still maintaining control of it, able to pick up the kills and hold this one down. Grid shot out of Lags right there. Will guarantee him the position. And ESC will have that two flag cap to the one currently. But Kazam, he does see one of his teammates get taken out. He does see one man just to his right and one to his left. But he gets taken down, and that will be A going over to name. In the meantime, ESC responding right away. We do see Jansen taking control of that balcony, as Dobbert uh, Dobbert was saying in the game just prior. And they will be able to control C. They will be able to control B and Name. They have to make something happen here. Remember, if Name drops below 82 tickets, that will be the end of the first map, and we will be going on to the second map, which will be Zavod. And to make matters worse, Name, they're the ones that chose this, this map. They chose Dawnbreaker. So if you're going to choose a map like that, you have to make sure... That you can, you know, lock down or secure that victory. As you see, Jansen, it's a nice kill on a tear right there. It does maintain control of that balcony just a little bit longer. And ES, or sorry, a name, just having a really tough time of moving out from A. And this is that line that Dobbert was talking about. If you control the balcony, it is so hard to cross this to get over towards C, to get over towards B. And you're seeing the siege, you know, kind of go to work here. Pavic is just picking up a couple of kills here or there. It's currently one and two right now. And he's just keeping them away from... Uh, or at least from maintaining B. He's trying to get back in there. Does spot one man to his right. Does get the kill. And he'll spot one more man live. So he gets a kill to him. That's a little bit of a nice two-piece out of him. And that might mean that B might get capped over back for them. Doobie can be working between these little bit of uh, buildings here to try to get a kill. But he does get taken down. That will be B, I believe, getting capped over to name. But Kazam, he has something to say about it. He's looking for them. He's going to be sneaking his way in here. Does spot one man. Does actually get taken down. So he won't be able to cap B back over. But C actually being capped in the backside by Super Macy. And that will mean a try cap coming in for a name here. And this is exactly what they need considering how far they currently are behind uh, in this first map. And ESC, they need, to, they need to cap something over quickly. They're sending one man to C. They're sending... Well, they did have one man over towards A, but he gets taken down by Jezus. They will be able to get C back, but... 
that's not enough. They need more than that. Even XPLO can't really make a push over towards B. And this will finally be named having the lead in the second half uh, for the first time in total of this game. And like, he's trying to move up here. He's trying to make a breakthrough. So see name, they got control of this balcony side. And we saw ESC use it so damn well in the game or in the half just prior. Well, name they had a tough time really making it work for themselves. And we're seeing XPLO is still trying to push in here, still trying to make this push towards B, but it's just being shut down completely. We do finally have a back spawn coming in for ESC though. Jansen. If he can get this kill onto Jezus, then he will actually open up this A site. We'll open up a two cap here, but he does get shot at. He's gonna throw that grenade. Try to pick up the kill. He's actually gonna get taken down very low on health or there, down to about 29. Gets the kill though with the impact grenade. That's all that matters. He will be able to cap over at A. At least get some respawns uh, with his team here, and they will be able to take A back. And this means name. How are they gonna respond to it? As the rest of ESC actually gonna go for a cap on B in the meantime. So they're going for a tri cap here and Look at positioning that name has. They just don't have anyone in the city to stop these. They're sending two men over towards A. They get a little bit of a back spawn here towards C. And I want to see, can Doobie hold on to this? Because this might give them a huge amount of tickets. And they're already down to 80 right now. They need to take another 20 off of name side if they want to be able to lock down this first map. Pavic does pick up the kill, though. So that will be C going back over to name. Because um, he has something to say about it, but he can't, unfortunately, see them just yet here. And in the meantime, ESC able to maintain control of A. So they will have that two cap back for themselves. And they will also gain control back of this balcony that we've been talking about uh, through the entire of this map. And just as he's trying to make a push towards B, name they realize they have to cap something soon. They're already down to 94 tickets. That's another 12 to go before they will have lost this first map. And they just keep falling down left and right. I mean, look over at ESC side on the kill. 7-1 for Jansen, 4-6 for Doobie, 6-2 for Lagzer, 7-8 for XPLO, who's been the man to really drive home control of B. On the other side, they just... Uh, Pavic's the only one that's really making any plays right now with his, uh, with his current scoreline. But you see, they see B's being capped over. I want to see, can Lagser stop this? He does have his pistol out. He's going to spot one. He's unfortunately missed the shot. He gets taken out by Super Macy, and that will be B going back over to Nameless. But it doesn't matter. Either way, the score has finally ticked over, and that will mean, if I can hit the right buttons, yes, I did, that... ESC will go into the second map with a one map lead. We'll be going to Zavod here in just a little bit. They're still playing this one out, so it's actually freaking me out whether I'm not whether I'm right or wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty damn sure. And actually, speaking of that, let's go ahead and bring up the rules uh, really quickly. Actually, no, let's do that when we come back, because we're going to go a little bit of a break, see if I can get Dauber back on Skype, so we'll have another handsome man to, really get, uh, to keep me company for this one. But so, guys... In the meantime, before we get to the second map, because I believe we're having a map change, we're going to take that quick break. We're going to be back in about five minutes, hopefully, and we'll have the conclusion. Can ESC pull this back, or can pull this back, can actually lock down this win in two maps, or can name pull back map number two, take it to map number three, which will be on Goldman Railway, and advance on into the next round. So guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly.